Hello everyone, I'm Sibyl Kormata. I'm an intensivist. This is Kelly, she's our respiratory therapist. So while we're grappling with the COVID pandemic and we're worried about running short on ventilators, I would like to demonstrate how we can split one ventilator between two patients. So this is our COVID and Puritan Bennett 980 series. Inspiratory limb, expiratory limb. You can see I have attached an extra connection tubing on both sides to increase the length of the circuit so we can reach out to multiple patients. And I also have attached an extra HEPA filter here at my expiratory limb. So step one, we are gonna connect two separate inspiratory circuits onto one single inspiratory limb, okay? So here I have, we have two separate inspiratory circuits, and we're gonna be using this Y piece. You can see I've already connected my one-way valve onto each end of the Y piece. Okay. And this Y piece will then go on to connect to this inspiratory limb. So there we are with two inspiratory circuits connected to one single inspiratory limb. Okay? We're going to repeat this for the expiratory circuits. So again, we're going to take two separate expiratory circuits and I have my Y piece here. Connect each of these to the Y. And now this Y piece will be connected to the expiratory limb. So there we go. Two expiratory circuits connected to one single expiratory limb. And each of these Y will then go to the Y tube. Now each of these Y tubes will then be connected to ET tube and patient lungs. So now here we are with two patients being ventilated through one single ventilator. Okay? You can see the one-way valve for my expiratory limb is right here. Okay, can you do without a one-way valve? So we did that little experiment and when we took away the one-way valves, we found that there was a backflow from one lung to another. So yes, you do need the one-way valves. In terms of supply, what else do we need? As you know, each circuit <laughs> comes with its own Y piece. And if you notice, I ended up using two Y pieces per patient for this method. So what you would need to order is one extra Y piece and two one big valves per patient you intend to connect to the ventilator. Can you do more than two? Can I connect four patients to the ventilator? The answer is yes. Okay, you would need a T piece. Now this T piece would then be connected over here on the inspiratory side, okay? And then each T piece will then be connected to its own Y piece. So basically you're gonna end up with four circuits here and you're gonna do the same thing for the expiratory side and you're gonna have four patients, okay? Attached to one single ventilator. If you don't have a T piece, you can use a Y piece instead. Every institute has their own different pieces of parts and you can get creative with your own. So that's about connecting the circuit. In terms of ventilation strategy, so ventilation strategy is a little different when you're splitting ventilators. We're not gonna go into too much detail in this video, but I'm gonna highlight some very quick points. So number one is when you're splitting ventilators, we may have to go back to our so favorite old-fashioned CMV mode, continuous mandatory ventilation mode. The reason being, you want all the patients that are sharing the ventilator to be passive on the ventilator. 
For example, if one patient is tachycardic and triggering the vent, it's going to cause all other patients to hyperventilate as well. So let's say they're all patients with severe ARDS and they're paralyzed anyways, then that solves the problem. But if not, you probably want to go up on the trigger threshold on the ventilator. That brings us to the next point is you may want to group patients with similar disease severity onto one single ventilator. So if I have three to four patients with severe ARDS, I may want to group them together, attach them to one ventilator, and then have another ventilator set up for the next set of three to four patients with moderate ARDS. Now, do I have to group them based on their body weight? Perhaps not, unless you're planning to use volume control more. Now, we love volume control mode for our patients with ARDS, obviously, because it guarantees low tidal volume, low driving pressure can be achieved, and of course, you're gonna reduce the rate of billing. However, you can imagine that using volume control when you're splitting ventilators can be very, very challenging because there's no way for you to guarantee any tidal volume for any patient. So you have no control over who's getting how much volume, and also you have no control on who is having how much driving pressure. In fact, a pressure control board may be more reasonable and doable because it was at least allow you to have control over your airway pressures. Obviously, you're gonna make sure you're monitoring the driving pressures, and I would have every patient connected to an entitled CO2 monitor to assess the efficacy of ventilation. Thank you so much for watching.